Today is the day. Weather looks good and we're going. This is the week's forecast. I saved a video screen grab of it for the passage. The last provision needed was diesel. Available here at the fishing dock. I said goodbye to marina manager Jose and the park guard. We're stocked with 150 liters in the tank and three 20 liter jerry cans. And we're off into the open ocean. Here we go, vamos. Canarias, hasta luego. A brisk 20 plus knot breeze on our backs carried only by the Genoa. Right out of the starting gate, it feels like Volvo Ocean Race excitement. Just raised the keel. We're going downwind, so here we go. Less resistance. It's crazy out there, it's great. Now we hit our stride, averaging about seven knot speed. Galapin is just cruising. After a few hours, it all seems routine, almost easy. Then all of a sudden, nothing happens. We just keep on mulling around. The island fades in the distance. You don't really think about what it means or represents to let go of Europe. You're happy that you're making progress, chewing up nautical miles. It was easy, except for one thing, the motion of the ocean. It was like what you see in the feeling. Well, it was getting to be like the never ending carnival ride, but we were making progress. Land disappeared behind us and there was nothing but the setting sun before us. Well, this sea is something. Certainly not boring. Exciting, yes. Roly poly. But, uh, God, we're making good speed with just a Genoa. Waiting for the sun to set, and then it'll be our first night. Day one, night one. The waves kept rolling us around, bobbing about relentlessly. Natasha was at her limit, and in a position to hurl. Watching did not make me feel any better. I was queasy and reached for a chocolate bar. Usually that does the trick for me, but I had to go inside and get it. If we went inside to fetch something, the malaise was nauseating within seconds. You get back out quickly in cold sweats, rushing to breach the fresh air. Natasha couldn't heave, and she wanted to bad. I told her to stick a finger down her throat, and that did it. She rejected the wretched aching feeling within.
The motion did not let up, and every wave series were punctuated by forceful bruising jerks that were reminders not to let your guard down. I need more chocolate. I'm tired, yawning. I was getting seasick. I sensed bad things rising from my insides. And without shame, my friends, I puked my guts out like never before that night. Welcome to my playground, said the great Atlantic Ocean. And have a good night. Daylight came never too soon, it seemed. I love sailing at night, but this was not one of my better evenings at sea. We were happy to see the break of dawn. The air is pure and the sun will soon warm us up. The sea settled and the wind was constant. We were now moving to a different beat, slow dancing to a slow rhythm. saw a lone ship, miles away but close enough to remind us we sometimes were not alone out there. The miles were rolling beneath us, slowly but surely. how the body has the ability to adapt. About 24 hours into it, we could go about our business inside. The hours passed by very slowly, so I kept myself busy checking our position in progress. I have this great map of the Middle Atlantic a big picture of where we are, as opposed to the chart plotter. And hunger strikes, thank goodness. We had clear blue skies and a blazing sun. We were off the coast of the Great Sahara Desert. We would have loved to make a stop in Morocco, but it appeared complicated politically, so I just got my Berber shesh on and bid respect to all the Berber brothers out there in the distance, in the golden ocean made of desert sand. Natasha was feeling better too and feasting on the fresh fruit we'd harvested. A little later, I put my sailing cap back on and tried a new sail formation. Something I'd wanted to do for a long time, but never did. I just put a spinnaker boom on my uh, Genoa because it was flopping around all night yesterday and last night. So tonight I've tried to put the spinnaker pole. As well, I've hoisted the mainsail and tied it down so that in a sense it's also in a can spinnaker pole. Anyways, I rigged this up. Looks like it's holding out and we're going pretty much straight downward. So it's pretty cool. See how, how long this lasts for. The Genoa was still flapping about, so I furled it up to tighten it. And the setup was just right. 
Looking pretty, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty happy. I'm not about to curb my enthusiasm. Night two was settling in. Sales were holding up in the unchanging conditions. We would close the bimini cover during the night to keep the seats dry from the soaking evening dew. Nights were particularly long. Not much to do, but check the position, make coffee and stargaze. Our watch system worked out pretty well. Nat and I would take turns sleeping and being in and out. about one third of the way into our passage. Weather was very constant with some slight variations in wind speed at different times of the day, like when the morning sun seemed to add a few knots of wind speed. We're now settled into this experience, the longest passage for the two of us so far, and we still have a long way to go. 